and to, it's my very great privilege to welcome uh, Jack Lin Chuan Tzu, uh, who is here to talk today about worker generated content. For those of you who don't know Jack already, Jack is a professor in the School of Journalism and Communication at Chinese University of Hong Kong, where he's the director of the Center for Chinese Media and Comparative Communication Research. He's on the editorial boards of uh, 11 or 12 international journals, including Associate um, Editor of the Journal of Communication. He's published six books, including um, the World Fa World's Factory in the Information Age, Working Class Network Society, and most recently, Goodbye Iceland, which highlights and foregrounds the relationship between very material productions of making the devices that we use to access social media and digital culture through the Foxconn workers with the kind of digital free labor in the global north, reflecting on the parallels between those relations between Foxconn and Apple and the North Atlantic uh, slave trade uh, of some years previous. Um, Jack's work and influence extends well outside academia, so he has also done extensive work with NGOs and activists, including work with SACON students and scholars against corporate misbehavior investigating some of those labor conditions and work. Uh, and today is going to talk about the emerging forms of relations between cultural production by workers and forms of labor activism. So I'll hand over to Jack and we'd just like to welcome you to this. Thank you very much, Chris, for a very a generous uh, introduction. And my special thank goes to uh, Mark for inviting me, although whether the invitation is really uh, correct or you know, it's really worthwhile, it's still up to you guys to decide after this presentation. And uh, a special thanks to Isobel, who made my trip possible, and all the logistic labor okay, going on and around uh, and inside this room right now. So uh, my heartfelt uh, thank you to all our uh, Leicester uh, colleagues. And today what I'm going to present is uh, uh, still an uh, initial attempt to put okay, this idea of worker-generated content, okay, WGC, into something more uh, systematic, something uh, uh, that we can make sense of you know, through uh, uh, partially, okay, uh, I would say only partially, because uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm st I feel I, I, I'm still very humbled okay, to talk to real cultural studies people, right? in the room, so I use cultural studies, uh, uh, you know, language and uh, ideas, okay, but uh, uh, I never really uh, feel uh, fully confident to refer to myself as a cultural studies person, okay, or labor studies, okay, both, so, so this, uh, uh, my intellectual uh, growth has uh, benefited a lot from what happened in this country, okay, from uh, Stuart Hall to E.P. Thompson, okay, this is, it's not just me, the whole generation of Chinese uh, intellectuals trying to understand industrialization and digital media going on in the Chinese context benefits tremendously from uh, the British uh, uh, scholarship. So this is a, a small attempt to give something back, okay, we are all indebted, okay, to, to the British uh, tradition of media and cultural communication studies. So what I'm going to do today is to talk maybe for a little more than half an hour, and then no matter how good I can talk about this stuff, okay, it's better that you guys have a direct experience. I'm going to play five songs, okay, not the entire songs, but the worker songs okay, from China as uh, a ways of uh, illustration to the genres and this new praxis that I call WGC. Just now, Chris uh, uh, already uh, mentioned my new book. It's called Goodbye, I Slave, uh, uh, which came out uh, last November. And uh, I'm very flattered that uh, since yesterday, I know more than one people in this room have read this book, have known this book, and have uh, criticized this book, all right? which is exactly what it's about. And uh, other people who have not, okay, please buy the book, okay, because <laughs> Because if you buy the book, all the money that I earn, okay, all the proceeds will be donated to a Congolese NGO okay, in the Democratic of Congo to eliminate the conflict minerals in our digital 
uh, device. All right, so that's all I want to say about the book. What I'm talking about today actually is drawing from also uh, from my other book called The Working Class Network Society, 2009. And, uh, uh, and then it, it will go into my next book, okay, called uh, China's uh, Digital Working Class, okay, uh, that I hope I, can, I will finish next year. So, um, so here, you, uh, in, in, in my past work and my ongoing work on China's digital working class, I'm going to be talking about the workers in different sectors, not the cultural workers that most of this conference has been focusing on. So I'm, well, I'm going to be talking about workers in manufacture, construction, transportation, service, all kinds of service, including domestic helper. Okay? So, so, so they're profession-wise, these are not cultural workers per se. They are amateurs. However, they still do cultural work nonetheless. And this, from my understanding, is becoming increasingly the norm. Lots of, I would say, the bulk of the cultural work, okay, not only in China, but probably in other parts of the world, are done by okay, non-professionals, people who are uh, doing other jobs, earning livelihoods from you know, outside the strictly defined cultural industries. Okay, but at the same time, they create content uh, in under conditions, sometimes uh, the conditions are of their choice, sometimes are not, and sometimes they are creating new conditions for uh, cultural production and mediating cultural work. And so, the, um, so, uh, so these are not cultural uh, workers we are talking about. I want to uh, start from this uh, caveat. So why we need to talk about WGC, worker generated content, it starts from my dissatisfaction you know, about the word UGC, right? user-generated content. Okay? User is an odd English word. Right? Before we talk about the computer user, mobile phone user, usually in English language, we only refer to drug users. Right? <laughs> right? The user. Okay? Why, why we, we, we thought the human beings should be reduced? Okay? So user is a very if we use Mark Husey's old term, one-dimensional, okay? So we are reduced, our relationship with media and technology is reduced to just one dimension. We use, okay? We use things that are being designed, okay, by the system, and then we get high and forget about reality, all right? So, so it's, uh, when user, when this term tra translated in, into Chinese is called yonghu, okay? That Chinese translation acquire even more of a kind of bourgeois, middle class, okay, uh, one dimensionality. Okay? You, if you are a user or a yong hu, okay, when, when it comes to digital and social media, then you are nothing but a consumerist, individualistic, passive, okay, and very easily manipulated subject by the corporations and state agencies. Okay, so I, I criticized all these ways, many, many, probably most people, okay, in different ways from my conversation, okay, most people in this room would criticize this very narrow, instrumental ways to define human relationship with media, okay, digital or not. But, but then, uh, after beating on the same, okay, uh, uh, UGC term for too long, I think I need a new term that is not that does not start with a U, starts with a W. Okay, so it's worker. Worker, okay, is different from uh, user in the sense that it is collective. Worker, you know, you know, come together to create uh, content, and they are proactive. Okay, so that, so production, you know, is uh, very important. Okay, and they perform a kind of natural labor. This goes back to my reading of Marx. Okay, before alienated labor, and here we are talking about alienated digital labor. There is, and there will still continue to be, a natural way of labor okay, that we use media for or, or communicate. So, there, there, so WGC re represents, for me, a more natural form of okay, uh, working people using digital media to create things that they really need. Okay, need-based uh, communication, not because they watched another advertisement. Okay, they desire something they do not need, but because they need to find jobs. 
They need to feed the family. They need to find affordable、uh, school for for their children. They need to find reliable healthcare for for the grandparents. Okay, and so so these are need based. Okay, uh, 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 WGC, and they become a, a, a new praxis in the sense that, okay, we talk about digital media or worker movements in theoretical language, but that's not enough. Okay, I always draw、uh, inspiration from workers. Okay, and many of these workers are activists themselves, and they engage the world and engaging others. Through embodied theoretical understanding and through enacted communication, okay, and this this、uh, the- theoretical understanding came from their everyday life and work, living in the factory, for example. Okay, that we will be hearing about their music today. Okay, you can see their understanding does not stay at the experiential level, but actually at the theoretical, at the creative level. Okay, to theorize about, for example, work injury. To theorize about okay experiences of resistance okay about okay uh, 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 you know so、uh, so it goes to abstract way、uh, a more general way and then the that generalized knowledge is not in the ivory tower it's actually they practice in their、uh, you know uh, everyday uh, crea- creative work after their shift okay from the assembly line or in the service industry okay and so so this this is a、uh, New uh, uh, praxis that uh, 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 I'm trying to、uh, understand, and that,、uh, you know, uh, that, that are already practiced by、uh, workers and activists. But also, I think as scholars, okay,、so, or I see myself as a dual identity. I'm、uh, I'm also an activist. I'm part of、uh, several labor NGOs and.、Uh, Uh, and the, some of the bands that you will be listening to today, actually, I'm also、uh, volunteering, you know, on their on their board too, right? So there, there this is a praxis.、Uh, we need to learn from workers' praxis, but our as intellectual, you know, ourselves, there's praxis in our own, you know, intellectual politics. Okay, whether we only want to criticize. Okay, so this going back to my dissatisfaction with the existing ways, at least for myself, to talk about. UGC. We will always say it's wrong. The cooperation is wrong. State surveillance is wrong. But what else? Okay. What else can we can we do? What el- what other language? Okay. Language start from simple concepts. So the, so、uh, WGC is this、uh, attempt to create a new set of language. And、uh, so the the point. Okay. Philosophers make various interpretations of the world. The point, however, is to change it. Right. So th- you can. See my uh, Marxist uh, okay lineage here, but let me um, um, also confess what I'm going to be talking about here. WGC is not something that has already prevailed in Chinese cyberspace or any other cyberspace. Okay, at this point, I still see okay uh, uh, all these worker practices as diverse, as dynamic. You know, as they are, but at the same time, they are they they still need a name. So this is、uh, Hannah Arendt's、uh, famous saying that a stray dog has better chance to survive when it has a name. So WGC is nothing more than a name for a stray dog. Many stray dogs, okay, in Chinese cyberspace that we try to come together and uh, uh, and to learn. Right. So this is uh, uh, why we need、uh, WGC and. With this, welcome to my world, the world of WGC. Let me begin with this、uh, illustration of one poetry. Oh, I was not. Okay, I was. I, I'm operating two computers. All right. So, so the.、Um, so let me start from this poem. Okay, this poem is from Yu Yuan, the world's largest shoe factory. Probably some shoes in this room right now are manufactured in this factory. Okay, this factory has sixty、uh, thousand people, and in April two thousand fourteen, forty-eight thousand of them went on strike. Right, nearly fifty thousand people. Right,、uh, went on strike, and、uh, and one poem came out. Okay, it was written, handwritten. Okay, on a notebook paper, and then. 
the, the poet, who is anonymous, okay, put this holy, holy poem onto a tree. Probably it looks like a pine tree to me. I don't know whether you can see it clearly in the back. Right? And, and then I translate that okay, into English. Okay, so uh, you can read the English. So basically, this strike is about workers. Now they are retiring, and they found out the factory has not paid for pension funds for workers, according to labor law. Okay? And then uh, workers are retiring. They cannot get their pension because the uh, management, you know, with the permission of the local government, okay, they did not pay pension funds. Okay, now these guys are, are uh, you know, retiring without pension. So they, 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 they wrote this poem. Okay? Officials collude with bosses. Insurance becomes our losses. Insurance is their pension insurance. What a pity, workers. Our useful years just a fuss. Strike, strike. The peak of labor movement is upon us. You know, the, the English you know, only give you a sense about what the content, but the Chinese is actually better. Okay? And uh, I know may, not many people in this room probably read Chinese, but let me read it. Okay. This is a poetic fo uh, format from a thousand years ago, from Song Dynasty. Okay, so it has a special rhyme. Right? So, so if I read the Chinese, okay, you can just enjoy the rhyme. Okay? I think it, it, it is meant to be, you know, people can sing it, but I don't know the melody, so I can only read it. But from that, you can already tell the, the, the musicality of that uh, poetic rhyme. Right? So this is how it reads in Chinese. 官商勾结相通,社保希望落空,可怜打工人,几多青春葬送。Okay, so this is a, a thousand year old poetic rhyme in there, okay, but now used you know, in the labor movement context. And it's a multi layered communication, you could see, okay, handwritten, okay, Chinese calligraphy, and then posted onto a tree, digitized okay, through uh, you know, probably a camera, phone camera, okay, and, and then. It's put onto WeChat. Okay, this platform is WeChat, the most important social media in China today. Okay, it's basically the equivalent of Facebook, but actually more powerful in, than Facebook with more function built in there. So it's multimodal communication, right? And then on the top, I, I think it's a, 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 um, a labor activist gave a title to it. Okay, and then it says. Okay, 大字报, okay, in, in, in those of you still remember Cultural Revolution. Okay, it's a very typical Maoist term. Okay, to 大字报, this is the form of communication during Maoist revolutionary era for the workers, the farmers, and the soldiers. Right, so, 大字报, so, it, so it has someone gave a, head, you know, a new headline to this poetry, which actually the format came from a thousand years ago. Right? So, and, and, and then, mo most important is, I still don't know who wrote this poem. Okay, so anonymity, worker you know, authorship. I know in this room, many people care a lot as middle class okay, intellectuals. I care a lot about my authorship, but workers, Probably not only workers, if we still remember Zapatista, okay, the movement in, in Mexico, right? The anonymity is a very important part to show the community and the solidarity okay, of the working class power. Right? And, and, and of course, there's another reason because they don't want to be tracked down by the management or the, uh, or the state, okay, uh, 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 the local police. Right? So here we, we see this is just one tiny snapshot you know, of worker-generated content right, from the social media that's circulating China right now, okay, at, at the moment. I don't know how many of them are circulating. Okay? And this is only one of many formats. Okay? Poetry actually has prospered okay, in Chinese working class okay, uh, space. Right? Who still write poetry on social media today? Okay, not my middle class friends or students, all right? but workers, they do this because poetry is a natural way for them to reflect. Okay? And, and they can work, I interviewed many worker poets, okay? they can do assembly line work or house cleaning while thinking about their poetry. Okay, when they take a break, they write it down on their mobile phone. Right? So poetry has a special, is especially important for uh, worker generated content. 
And then the, when the poem is really good, other workers with more music, musical talents would give it a, a melody, would perform. So some of the songs you will be hearing are coming from poetry indeed. Except poetry, we, uh, workers in China also have a history of writing their own stories about their own life, autobiographic, sometimes fiction, sometimes novels. But the high time for worker novel in China okay, is actually the 80s, late 80s and early 90s. Right? Since the beginning of uh, the, the spread of internet among workers in China, uh, fiction writing and novel writing had actually declined. Okay, so there is not digital media will unconditionally help worker to create. Okay, there's a complicated reason. Okay, I won't elaborate here. Okay, music. Okay, lots of music. Okay, in different formats that we will be hearing about. Uh, photography. Okay, oh, there's a photograph a group uh, called Ji Chen Se Su Grassroots Pixels. They use secondhand uh, uh, camera. Okay, donated by middle class Chinese to take pictures. Right, and they develop their own. Uh, exhibition, right? cartoon, documentary. Okay, uh, uh, there's uh, the best documentary, most influential uh, documentary make, worker documentary maker. Is, his name is Wang Dezhi. Okay, in, in Beijing, theater group. I just visited a theater group called Di Dinghua. This is a group of uh, uh, domestic helpers. Okay, they come together uh, in weekends to perform their own theater. All of them are middle aged. Uh, you know, uh, domestic helper, female, uh, okay, workers. Mobile phone games. Now, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 labor NGOs, groups such as Jianjiao uh, Bu the English translation should be something like Pepper Tribe. Okay, this is a young female migrant worker NGO, and they are, they, they are not, they, one thing they did last year is they designed mobile phone games so that people will know how things are going on and going wrong in the factory, okay, in the, and, and, and educate male workers about gendered industrialization as well. So they're using a mobile phone game. And, um, and then there are many performing art projects and they would come together in this annual event called the Migrant Workers Spring Festival Gala, Da Gong Chun Wan. Right? So everyone knows uh, Spring Festival is the most important year. It's, it's the Chinese Christmas. Okay? When workers would uh, go home and then they would have a, uh, have a special evening. Okay? So, so, so the, the, the poetry, the music, okay, the theater performance come together annually. Okay? They would perform on stage and then it will be live cast through social media, sometimes even satellite TV. Okay, in China during the Chinese New Year uh, 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 era, you know, time. So, um, so probably some people in this room will raise your eyebrows, say, how come I didn't know all these things in China? I thought from what I learned from British media is that Chinese workers are obedient, they are passive, they just, they're just human robots, right? They don't do anything creative, okay? And they are, you know, uh, so, so this is my, uh, my uh, note here, very, very importantly, okay, Western media usually uh, portray China and Chinese workers okay, as apolitical subjects. Okay, this is simply not true. Capitalism cannot be exported without labor movements and activism being an integral part of it. So what we are seeing you know, uh, in China is an extension, you know, I'm saying this with all my sincerity, it's an extension of the global working class story started in this country. Okay, so the, uh, 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 even though they are using digital uh, media. But then in, uh, in, uh, chi in, in, the, in, in Chinese context, there, the scale is slightly different, it's, it's, uh, it's larger. Right? So the, um, uh, Maybe I, I should explain, you know, the, uh, on the top, this sentence is from a very important book from last year by Hao Ren. It's, the book is called China on Strike. Okay, the conclusion of that book, uh, this is a collection of Chinese wor worker activists, you know, and uh, all their stories, right? And, uh, and then it, 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 uh, it concludes with this sentence, Chi uh, China has the world's largest and most restive working class. Okay, because of the industrialization, going, the scale of industrialization going on, and the Communist Party being okay, much more authoritarian than 
all right, uh, other parts of uh, you know uh, the, the 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 world, all right. So the um, so the, here I, I want to just show one thing in this visual data visualization is quite uh, famous because uh, Bill Gates uh, tweeted it, all right, and uh, um, it's, a, it's it shows how much construction material were used in China. We in 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 the in the West, we only see products coming from China, okay? But then there are huge warehouses, factories, roads has to be built, okay? Within three years, between 2011 and 2013, okay, this is the, on the right, that's 6.6 6 .6 gigatons of uh, cement is used in China to build all this world factory, okay? Imagine how much uh, labor power in terms of construction work had to go in there. And on the left, 4.5 gigatons, you think a lot of industrialization building has went up in the US for 100 years. Okay, this is official data from the US. So, uh, so you could see the scale of uh, industrialization okay, uh, going on. And now all the construction workers in China have mobile phone, most likely a smartphone, right? a low end smartphone. So now workers have uh, uh, um, their digital device. This is uh, some survey I did more than 10 years ago. And you could see between 2002 and 2006, mobile phone has increased from okay, less than 16% to okay, almost 84%. And internet, most people are using internet cafe at, uh, more than 10 years ago, okay, had uh, increased from less than half to more than three quarters. And at the same time, you can see the price has been drop, dropping. Okay, so mobile phone was almost saturated. Okay, almost saturated with the Chinese migrant worker okay, uh, population uh, 12 years ago. Right, but it's not just because the price dropped. If we look at uh, the other side, this is landline phone at home. Okay? Even though landline has become much less expensive, but then workers are using it less as well. Okay, so it's because of the, the, this is a mobile population. Okay, so they, they have mobile uh, uh, devices with them, uh, every, every one of them. Right? And um, if we put this uh, diffusion of new technology into the larger societal context, so, so here is, uh, is official uh, Chinese data to show right, uh, Okay, the curse is not coming up. But basically, 20 years ago, most of internet users in China have college degrees, right? So the, the, the uh, I think it was almost uh, eight, uh, 85 percent back in eight, uh, 1998, and then in 2003, you could see about half of Chinese internet users became, you know. Uh, I've never been to college. And, and that proportion in 2010, okay, you have almost three quarters. These are people who have never been to college. Right? And this is last year, okay, this is almost 80%. 80% of internet users in China have never been to college. Right? This is probably not only true in China, but in most of the developing world you know, uh, contexts. Okay, when you have an internet population, Right, eighty percent of them are working class. Okay, this is of course a very okay crude way to say if you have not got college education, probably you end up uh, in working class jobs. Right, and if we um, look at this in a, okay slightly okay visualize the data. Okay, uh, you could see this is the size of the Chinese internet user population. Okay, throughout the twenty years. And, and this is, the, on the right, this is China's national population, 1.3 billion people, right? So actually, in the future trend is if internet further diffuse okay, in China, then there will be even more working class. There will be even less people like us who are college educated, okay? So the majority of people who are making content online are uh, working class. So this is the, the larger picture. So this is uh, the, the context when we are talking about the, the uh, uh, WGC. Right? Uh, and the hypothesis, again, I am blatantly Marxist right? in, in this sense. And uh, so the, the, the hypothesis is that there is a movement now. Okay? Of course, it's a hypothesis. Right? 
uh, from UGC to WGC. And essentially, this is, you know, I also use the term information have less. Okay, people who get information technology, but they do not have full citizenship. They do not have uh, full consumer rights. But at the same time, they also have less uh, obligation with the existing system. Therefore, they have more motivation to change the system, the problematic system as it is. So, the, so the, from the have less to network labor. Network labor would be labor with class consciousness. Okay? So they, they have become uh, you know, mo moving from a digital class in itself to a digital class for itself using digital technologies in their industrial uh, context. So this is, uh, and, and uh, underlying this hypothesis is the uh, assumption that this 80% working class internet users have different interests, have different creativity, have different cultures, working class culture, that probably I don't, I don't need to uh, belabor for this group. Culture, uh, class is a very important cultural uh, you know, uh, 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 signifier, right? And then there's a, this, there's a collective orientation based on the basic needs of workers, like finding jobs or affordable housing okay, for their family and communities. And then the, this is uh, 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 openings for a new class-making process. What E.P. Thompson has written about in this uh, you know, country you know, is, uh, uh, is, is only beginning. Okay? We are only seeing the beginning of this uh, process. But let me confess, most workers do not make WGC, still UGC, okay, especially image, okay, so this would be the popular images that wor average workers are exposed to, all right? So top left is called Kuai Shou, okay, it's a short video, okay, you would see working class people doing all kinds of weird things, okay, if it's female, it probably have all, so all kinds of sexy, okay, body parts, okay, as a way to attract you. If it's male, okay, he probably will be telling sexist jokes, okay, or showing off his masculinity. Sometimes, okay, working class body are meant to be hurt, okay. They would be doing things, okay, you see there uh, a girl eating lots of things, okay, eating too much things as a way to attract, okay. In other cases, working class male would be eating gla broken glass as a way to attract people, all right. So lots of this, uh, um, okay, uh, things that average people, middle class people would think is very vulgar, obscene, chaotic, meaningless, right? But underneath these images, right, on the top right, is a group of workers dancing Gangnam style together, okay, in order to get their unpaid wages, right? And down there is the same, okay, these are people who wear the costume to be angry birds, okay, because they they, they want to uh, get their unpaid wages. But underneath these images, there are, uh, these are Weibo posts. Okay, Weibo is a uh, Chinese version of Twitter. Right? So here it's talking about labor struggle in Shanghai. Right? Over there, uh, you know, it's talking about collective bargaining. Right? So there are different things going on at the same time. So what uh, WGC uh, is about is really about zooming away from these eye-catching images of UGC and then make sense of this new praxis of WGC buried under the eye-catching ca content, okay? And, uh, and, and then we usually, okay, like in the case of, the, of that poem we just talked about, we usually need more culturally situated knowledge, local knowledge, in the context of contemporary China. So this is the larger context of China today, all right? Uh, David Harvey, of course, borrowed from Wang Hui to say China today is neoliberalism with Chinese characteristics, and that neoliberalism is more authoritarian with the big brother not only watching you, but okay, knocking on your door, taking you away, all right, uh, in, in, uh, around midnight, right? And so there's a lot of state limitation on labor movement. Activists okay, now have not many choices except media. Okay, they cannot put their bodies together. Okay, it's increasingly more difficult for uh, you know, uh, uh, collective gathering. Therefore, uh, online uh, media become uh, even more important. And then the, the social media, just now we mentioned WeChat right, uh, or, or Weibo, these are all capitalist corporations. 
Okay, they are listed in New York Stock Exchange or Hong Kong ex uh, Stock Exchange. So the ownership is exactly like Facebook. Okay, they are, they are not worker on social media. So at the political economy level, okay, worker have very little control over what's going behind their social media content. And then there is a lot of reliance. Okay, Hong Kong plays a lot of part in this. Is the lots of the activism within China are funded and relying on Hong Kong, okay, NGO or American British, okay, uh, funding. Okay, in a way, it's good. Okay, money can come in a st stable way from across the border, but in a way, it's actually not so good because the NGO people become more attached to the funder to the to the overseas agenda than to the real needs in the working class neighborhoods. Right? So, so the, these are all you know, NGOs as anti-solidarity machine, okay? as uh, Qin Kuan Li and uh, Shen Yuan talked about in their article. So at the same time, we see the rise of digital capitalism, okay? that uh, 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 UGC become the, probably the mo most important source of accumulation for big data and algorithms. And so this struggle okay, between what Christian Fuchs would call the common space ICT and capitalist ICT came out in the Chinese context as the struggle between WGC and UGC. A second context we should uh, uh, bear in mind is that okay, uh, if we look at uh, Chinese uh, labor movements, not as something happened after internet, but as a hundred year process. Okay, then, you know, almost a hundred years ago, okay, 1930s and 40s, okay, this was, you know, before the communist, you know, takeover, okay, of mainland China, okay. Actually, China had a tiny working class. 90% of the Chinese economy was agrarian. However, in this period, we actually have a very, you know, have a huge class consciousness, the left-wing creative industry people. You are using novels, are using cartoons, woodcutting, theater, okay, to persuade the Chinese people, right, working people and middle class people. You know, we need to have class consciousness to fight imperialism, you know, to fight capitalism. And, and then, you know, uh, so, so, so the, uh, historically, okay, uh, China used to have very high class consciousness when working class was relatively small. After the 50s, you know, through the 70s, when Mao, okay, Chairman Mao was uh, ruling the country, okay, the working class was still small, bigger than before, okay, China followed the Soviet roots of industrialization. Uh, so the working class was still small, I, I think it became maybe 20, no more than 20% of the, the, the working population. But at the same time, there is super intense class consciousness, cultural revolution, okay, class struggle is every day. Right? When industrialization was actually level was still relatively slow, uh, was still relatively low. But since the 80s, this is China's turn to neoliberalism, post Mao era, uh, this uh, interregnum period of growing uh, working class, okay? uh, growing especially in the private sector, okay? when old state owned industry workers were laid off. But at the same time, class consciousness started to decline. Okay, but, uh, but in that period, we still see very important TV and also I, I already mentioned worker novels in this period. They, in that novels, they still have lots of class consciousness. All right? But then it was declined uh, as China had uh, start to pick up on you know, industrialization. But since the 2000s, especially since China joined the WTO in 2001, China became the world's factory. China has the largest working class population in the world. But at the same time, the uh, class consciousness, if we look at all the workers, okay, working people, is actually at its lowest point. So this is uh, not straightforward Marxist formula. Okay? It's actually the reverse. Okay? If we go back to orthodox Marxism, then when there's more economic base, okay, then it should be coupled with the superstructure, the ideology. Okay? But here, what we see in the Chinese context is the opposite. When the working class population grow, actually the consciousness decline. People probably will ask why. Okay, this has to do with the global context. Okay? The Russian Revolution, October Revolution, Okay, it was the moment that ignites, not only in China, but worldwide. There was a global context 
for socialism and communist movement in the 30s and 40s. And then the rise and fall of uh, labor capitalism, of course, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, okay, the neoliberal subjectivity became you know, the, the norm. And of course, within uh, uh, China, there can be a separate analysis about how the CCP, the Communist Party, had declined in some way maybe worse than the, the, the transformation between the Labour Party and the New Labour. Okay, and then the worker as neoliberal subjects. Okay, now average workers are as consumerist, as uh, entrepreneurial, and, uh, and they could, could not care less about solidarity. Okay, if they only go to Foxconn or other factory to try to make more money. So this is the larger context. So uh, this, bearing this context in mind, uh, we have uh, colleagues, for example, Wan Ning Sun's analysis. Okay, she interviewed lots of uh, worker uh, uh, documentary makers and then came up with very pessimistic conclusion. Okay, this structure you know, is too powerful, it's too alienating, okay, to too disempowering. Okay, that worker agency cannot prevail, okay, cannot even survive. Okay. So what I would like to say is we need a more nuanced framework. Okay, is, uh, uh, going back to Raymond Williams, okay, if you look at the dominant, the residual, and most, most important, the emergence. Right? In the Chinese context, the dominant is this neoliberalism with Chinese characteristics I was just talking about. And the residual in, China, in workers, they still they have they use Confucian language. Okay, Confucianism is still around in a residual way, and the old Maoism, you know, especially among state-owned, laid-off workers, are still very important. But then, for the young workers who are using digital media today, okay, then it's this emergent. I would call them neo Maoist, neo Maoism. Okay. And, uh, and they, they have other formations, even Trotskyism, okay? all type of different uh, uh, formations because they, can, they use the internet and learn uh, very different uh, things. So if we use this framework, can, we can see probably something more from the um, uh, much less pessimistic. Uh, uh, in my book, uh, Goodbye Isolate, I gave a, a historical uh, you know, an, a, a introduction about three phases of uh, WGC in China, right? before 2004, this is basically private and small group uh, instant messaging using QQ, okay? the equivalent of MSN, okay? and uh, QQ cluster. QQ cluster is like Facebook groups. Now, even today, when workers strike, they always use QQ cluster among themselves. QZone is, is a web lock service. But uh, after 2004, we move into phase two. This is the stage of public forum. Okay? Before then, it's, it's only co-workers and friends okay, in the same neighborhood would uh, be able to use digital media to organize. But then after 2004, until around 2009, uh, multimedia, video, vlogging came out. Okay? Public forum become more, much more important and it's more accessible okay, because it's public. And then uh, since 2010, it's Weibo and WeChat. Okay? So this is more like Facebook and uh, 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 today is semi, uh, you know, public, semi-private. Okay, so they have their Facebook corporate page. Okay, it's called Weixin Gonghao. Okay, uh, WeChat public account. And then, uh, most important for the third stage is they're all on mobile phone. In the previous stage, when we are talking about, all right, uh, public forum, most of the workers are still using uh, internet cafe. Right. So uh, very important to note is that. Uh, uh, this is not a linear process. When they have more technology and more advanced more mobile, uh, mobile phones, workers would be more effective to, okay, to, uh, to have their ac activism. This is actually not a linear progression. Phase two, by my understanding, is probably the most effective for workers okay, to use digital media to empower themselves vis-a-vis you know, -vis the management and the local state. The third stage, we actually see a relative decline. Okay, five minutes. I'm going to maybe fast forward so that I can play songs. Sure, sure. Okay, so this is uh, about uh, uh, more beginning. This is a vlogging okay, service. Okay, and out of this uh, vlogging campaign, right, the, uh, the first, uh, China's first ever independent shop floor union uh, you know, came into being because of this, uh, in part, uh, because of this uh, 
uh, you know, vlogging, you know, so, uh, by, by a vlog, worker vlogger. His name is Zhang Jun. This is a Maoist forum, okay? Uh, uh, and very important, the, the worker Maoists own this website, okay, until it was shut down in 2011 for six years. So this is a very important uh, common space, okay, uh, 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 public space. And this is my favorite picture, okay, which I would call feminine solidarity. Okay, Chinese worker movement suffer from masculinity militancy. But here you can see is uh, these are uh, workers making uh, car locks, okay, for your Honda car when you open your car door, okay, and then they are using mobile phone to deter the male guards who might be okay uh, beating you know them and as a way to deter you know the. Um, Violent guards. This is a strike, okay, a live broadcast on social media. This is the latest, okay, this year we have uh, a very special case, okay, uh, using uh, WeChat, right? This is a domestic helper in Beijing and she likes literature. And every weekend she goes to a literature group to write uh, about her, uh, uh, her own life and then it went viral. So viral that you know, uh, uh, WeChat, okay, actually self-censored because you got so many million people reading it. It's very uh, rare because, like I just mentioned, most of the uh, uh, working class content going viral are images. But this is pure text, pure literature, prose, right? And this is the, probably the most successful case when a group of workers, so it's not just her, but the whole, her whole, whole literature group come together and they have high class con uh, consciousness and they manage to design and direct the public attention through both digital media and legacy media towards their own, you know, the group decides the, the, their own way to promote, okay, worker images. So uh, this is, uh, uh, in sociology, we call it uh, uh, property space analysis, right? So each dot here is a video, right? So I connect this worker video and then uh, there are three dimensions. One is connectivity, whether these videos are made by a group of workers together or individually. Okay, so, that's, so this is, uh, oh, this video are made by a group of workers and these are made by individuals. Whether the video are created in order to pursue some activist goal, to change what the factory or the government is doing, right? So they, have, they could have either have activist goal or it's just a practice, okay? These are practice. Uh, video training workshop for labor activists, okay, so they're not for real world change, okay, and then uh, whether at the end it has empowerment effects, okay, at the end, did, did the uh, video end up, uh, you know, bring the worker his or her unpaid wages, okay, or whether that factory had changed its policy, okay, so it could be yes or no. So what I want to show here, so if, if it's not created by collective, it's created by uh, individuals uh, and not for empowerment and, uh, and also there's no empowerment, you know, uh, 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 activism goal, then it's in this black box is called UGC. Okay, I'm encouraging myself at least to look away from this black box into all these other possibilities. Okay, and these are the real spaces of uh, WGC. Right? So with this, let me play some music, all right? So the music genres are, I, I very roughly uh, talk about five genres, and the first one is called Injured Worker. Okay, so this is uh, a song about a uh, worker losing uh, his hands, both of his hands. It's a real story, okay, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in, in the factory. You can close your eyes if you want.
So the, the lyrics uh, basically says, you know, uh, I am dancing with the machine in the, uh, in the rhythm that will never change. So you get the, mon the mon monotony, you know, the rhythm of the factory zone, right? And then uh, it's very boring and disempowering, you know, dehumanizing. And this is the moment when the uh, injury happens. <laughs> So you get the sense of okay, uh, what Raywin Connell would call dispossession. Right? So this is to theorize dispossession, right? And uh, the, the, the lyric says, you know, my hands become a discarded uh, machine, right? And my body become discarded. But if we read uh, Con uh, Connell even more, he she would say, okay, uh, uh, dispossession is only the beginning when we talk about okay, the disp dispossessed uh, experience. Okay, it's actually resistance is equally important, and resistance is dynamic and uh, and diverse. So the second genre, okay, is what I would call picket line struggle. Okay, this is a song about uh, construction workers trying to claim their unpaid wages. This is the beginning of the song. Okay, we have worked so hard in the construction site for a year, but now the boss is not paying our wages. We need to go back home, you know, for the Chinese New Year. And this is the moment when people come together, okay, uh, and then they won the, the the struggle. Okay, it's also based in the real world. Okay, uh, construction site story. So this is all the workers coming together to pressurize the boss. So this part, okay, is a transition where you hear individual voices of different wor workers are saying why he, he, he thinks, okay, the boss is wrong. Okay, so you get, get a plurality of worker voices. And the next genre is what I would call dignified worker, okay, and it's actually seen by Duan Yu, all right? And she did a series of interviews. She's a migrant uh, worker herself, and then she interviewed other female workers and wrote this song. This song is about how you lost, as a female worker, you lost your identity, okay? When you, when you go to a restaurant, you are called just a, a, a waitress, okay? You, when you go to a factory, you just call a line worker, okay? You lost your name, but at the end, she discovered her real name. So this is about a, a, a female worker discovering her own name and her identity, dignified identity. So this is the beginning and uh, this is the moment when she found her, her own name. So you can see they borrow a lot from traditional Chinese folk music uh, melody, right? And the last one is the Maoist, okay, it's the Neo Maoist, uh, or oh, 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 there's a fourth one. It's a sarcastic, I, I probably should save some time, all right? It's about, uh, they, they, they use humor, okay, worker using humor, okay, to talk about management is like a dog, the dog is biting me and now I'm kicking back, right? 
so uh, so th that's uh, that's uh, there's a sarcastic. Let's just hear a few se seconds. So this is sarcastic, okay, genre. So the last one is uh, the Maoist one, all right? Neo Maoist. So Neo Maoist is different because it's one systematic change. It's not based on economic, you know, demand of the individual. You want to change the whole system, right? So it it, tra it communicates determination. Okay, it, it translates uh, optimism about the future. Okay, so the, the lyrics is actually full of Maoist poetry. Mao is also a poet himself, right? So it's uh, making reference to the long march to, uh, to no matter how difficult it is, we will change the world. Okay, so that kind of determination. So I have to fast forward. So here we can see the plurality of uh, worker voices, okay, in uh, WGC. And uh, they're much more impactful than UGC, okay? This is uh, the worker coming together to do Gangnam style. Okay? There's a theory of this, but they never really, okay, even though they use the consumerist UGC mode to get uh, media attention, but they never succeed to get their unpaid wages. Right? But then, so comparatively speaking, WGC is more impactful to help workers uh, compared to UGC. However, the success of WG is still uh, limited, okay, to more more limited to cultural expression and network formation, right? And so there are many critiques. I have only started to talk about it. Okay, we ha we still have many, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues because uh, WGC worker, 80 percent of China's 710 million user population, okay, is too diverse and too dynamic. Okay, uh, uh, this is. Uh, uh, actually, the old way, when Bill Clinton was talking about the uh, Chinese Communist Party trying to control the internet, he said the, the, uh, Beijing is just trying to nail jello to the wall. Okay? I feel I'm almost, almost like trying to, you know, WGC is a jello, okay? I'm trying to nail it on the wall. And then within the uh, labor activism group, there are critiques to say, you guys are singing and dancing, and then it's not helping the movement. Okay, and then workers sing and dance and they're happy, they don't want to struggle anymore. Okay, so this is another uh, critique from inside the, um, uh, the movement. And, and then the, there has been insufficient structural transformation. Still, okay, that, like that, that, that Maoist worker forum, that worker actually controlled the whole okay, website and the management, you know, is still very rare. And whether this WGC should uh, prioritize talking to non-workers, to the middle class people, or the society at large, or to workers themselves, is still something uh, arguable. And whether we need more different genres, okay, what I just presented is a genre for all the Chinese work, digital working class, but maybe different 
okay, industry, different regions of China, okay, China is the size of Europe, okay, different regions have different subcultures or ethnic group or gender group. So these are all possible critiques. But let me just conclude by saying uh, uh, we need to reach beyond uh, bourgeois individualist accounts of creativity in favor of uh, generic analysis. This is what Miller and Kratt has been calling for, and WGC is probably one answer along this direction. Uh, for us to see the complicated and uh, very important empirical reality through a new analytical uh, uh, pr approach. Okay, today we have seen the text and the context, the genres, and I just begin to outline a few of the major critiques. And this is a technical, tactical evolution of the residual and the emergent against the dominant uh, neoliberalism with Chinese characteristics. And we need to go back to uh, workers' existential needs and their collective commons, okay, activism, uh, and oriented to uh, empowerment effect. So this is an uh, epochal transformation we are confronting towards uh, new labor practices uh, through digital and non-digital media. Okay, this may uh, not just be limited to China, so I will only uh, conclude with this poetry. Okay, probably similar things are also going on in India, in South Africa, in other parts of the Global South, especially the so Global South societies that are fast industrializing. We need to pay more attention to this new praxis of WGC. So this is the, uh, the, the, the uh, 48,000 worker okay, strike okay, coming communicate to us through Weibo, the Chinese Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about going over time. We have run over a little bit, but I'll ask everybody to just hold their appetites and obedience for a short moment. Bondage, so we have time for a couple of questions at least. Um, and I'll just ask you to come in and Thank you. 
work sites in the industrial societies. And often the, you know, the, the work site had a, had a conservative form because it was about um, an, enabling the labour to take place about the middle of the road, the trench, the melody and the rhythm coinciding with the demands of the task. But at the same time, the content was radical because the, the lyrics and sentiments and the kind of affections that were invested in the song were often very, of course, critical of the, the plantation or the Factor and whatever it was. Um, but what, of course, in, in having that radical content, what it did was provide a kind of an environment uh, of care, of compensation, and coping with the demands of work. And in your final slide, you're talking about the, the critique of this work as being just a kind of uh, just a safety valve or a kind of form of, kind of you know, temporary kind of compensation. But you didn't really kind of say what you thought about that. So maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on your own reading, I suppose, of. The value of uh, this kind of aesthetic and kind of uh, um, media production work is kind of often. Excellent question. Thanks, Mark. Maybe uh, the same question can be said about uh, rock music. Uh, did rock music change the world? Uh, did, you know, with the you know, African American music, okay, did they change the world? It depends on okay, where we, we, we want to make. Uh, it has to be, the answer has to be context specific, right? And so the, uh, 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 I, I don't want to pretend I know the answer. I think the answer probably can be can can come out maybe ten or twenty years from now. Okay, we are not talking about this is a emergent process of, uh, of, of, of worker creating their uh, content. And uh, one lesson, okay, I, I have learned from my earlier. Study of working class issues, and sometimes we jump to our conclusion too quickly. Okay? But ac actually, the uh, workers, you know, they, if we have a too quick a conclusion, it's either yes or no, but that's okay, sophisticated uh, okay, interactions. Workers actually also uh, you know, tell you the answer is both yes and no. Right? So, it, so it depends on what kind of context. Okay? And, uh, 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 but then there, there, there is a hierarchy. Okay, so I think there's a hierarchy when we talk about uh, uh, future developments. Uh, WGC is already around in the most uh, basic uh, okay, uh, way of technological diffusion. Okay? And people are having devices. Every worker you know, has have, 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 have a mobile phone you know, on her or his body, okay? and then they're using it, creating content, sometimes consciously, sometimes subconsciously. But then the, uh, the uh, that's only the very basic level, okay? And then the uh, increasing, I think it has to do, so the answer, the marks, uh, uh, I have to give a contingent, okay, answer. It depends on how Chinese neoliberalism crashed, okay? So if it keeps, okay, cross-burning, then WGC will probably still uh, you know, be very marginal, okay? Be not too successful, okay, from your, if I can uh, you know, extend that from your uh, question. However, I don't think Chinese neoliberalism or, or any kind of capitalism will continue to expand forever. Okay, from planet Earth to Mars, I know, right? And if they stop, okay, capitalism, neoliberalism, it's like, they're like sharks. If they don't, if they, if they don't spend, you will have crisis, right? And China has not uh, gone through its real uh, you know, crisis yet. Okay, the 2008 2009 global financial crisis was only a speed, little speed bump for the Chinese economy. Okay, so, so far it's still growing very quick. And I'm, uh, 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 I, I think uh, the uh, Chinese uh, uh, neoliberalism will encounter a major crisis in the very uh, in the not too distant future. Okay, it's in, in part also because the, the powers that be now they invest the most. Okay, uh, you know, I think the, uh, because they don't have to have privacy or okay, legal strings attached, attached they, they use uh, big data in much more violently okay, uh, surveillance you know, ways. And they not think they know everything in China. Okay? And that will create a false bubble. Okay? If you still remember the, the, the analysis by Paul Edwards about closed worlds, okay? about, how, about how the US military uh, information system failed in the uh, in the Vietnam War, okay, because the, the US military 
the Pentagon thought we have all the information about Ho Chi Minh trail, okay, but then at the end it failed miserably. Okay, I think that for once uh, the uh, Chinese powers, okay, that be, they have, they have so much control of all the information, there will be in another bubble, okay, that will lead to uh, them to, to be detached from the working class reality. Okay, that's that's when okay uh, all the capacity that we are seeing here. Okay, and uh, and the best example about the effective um, uh, WGC so far as I know is not from mainland China actually. Okay, it actually came from Taiwan. Another song okay that they wrote and they sing is actually a uh, Korean song initially from Guangzhou uprising okay, in Korea. And then the Taiwanese gave uh, Chinese uh, uh, lyrics to this. And then they, they will sing that song uh, during a strike when they surrounded the, 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 the factory boss. And then they will sing that song, it's a militant song, okay? And then that boss peed in his pants, <laughs> right? So that's actually you know, a very special moment. So, so it shows, okay, in the, if we can, we can use something to see on the picket line in, uh, in the time of real needs, not in the time of entertaining ourselves, then it could you know, have that uh, you know, effect. But whether that moment come, okay, has to do with the life cycle of uh, you know, capitalism itself, including digital capitalism. Okay, fantastic. I think we should thank Jack once again. And then <laughs>